But first, we actually have to talk about dependent types. So, uh, so, <laughs> <laughs> uh, Stay tuned. <laughs> so we're going to we want to define a predicate on booleans that take two booleans and uh, is the, we want this to mean that x is equal to y from a logical point of view. Uh, and we could do that if this was a legal thing to do. We could say if x then if y, we basically we're making a truth here. If x and y are both true, then they are equal. So we'll return top, the logical truth operator. Uh, otherwise, we'll return bottom, which is uh, the logical falsity. Uh, if x is false, then if y is false, in this case over here, then we return, return top, which is the logical truth that if x and y are both false Boolean values, then they're the same Boolean value. So that's we want this to be this predicate to be true in that case. And here we want to return false. We want logical falsity because x and y uh, y is true and x is false, and so that should be there. And so in order for this expression to be legit, uh, we need to give these logical symbols types. And so we'll just do that. We'll say that uh, uh, bottom and top have the type star, which means the type of types. Or the type of types that we've defined up till now. So let's just formalize it. It says that uh, bottom is a type, top is a type, boolean is a type, natural numbers is a type, if A and B are types, then the conjunction is a type and so forth for, for everything. But in all these ways that we actually won't even have elimination rules, just introduction rules for, for this little star operator. More introduction rules. All right, so now it's all legit. And now we can write, create the formulas like for all x, there exists y such that uh, x is equal to y. It's a potential formula that is legitimate. Uh, we can. We can actually be a little bit more sophisticated in our definition, so I'm going to redefine a couple things. Uh, we're going to define not, which is an operator on booleans, uh, to be uh, if b then false, else true, so that negates the boolean input. Uh, we can define boolean equality, so that makes <laughs> x and y as booleans and returns a boolean, or rather than a logical operator, but a boolean truth or false of whether they're equal or not, and that can be defined by this if statement over here. We can define the Boolean function that takes natural numbers x, n, and m, uh, and does recursion on them to determine whether n and m are the same value. I haven't written that out; it's a little bit long. And then we're going to like put all of our work into this this angle bracket operator that I defined here, which just takes a Boolean value b and lists it to the logical level. So if we're given the Boolean value t, the angle bracket returns the logical truth, and we give it a Boolean value f. This expression will return the logical falsity operator over here. So we can build our expressions here. We can make expressions like for all x, either x is equal to 0, or uh, there exists y such that x is equal to the size successor of y. And we can, like, these are just formulas. They don't have to be, like, false or not false or anything like that, right? So we can just say for all n and for all, for all x and for all y, which are natural numbers, they're always equal, right? This is not going to hold, right? But it's a perfectly legitimate formula. <laughs> it, it, it is a comprehensible formula. One that's not true, but it's comprehensible. It's a valid thing that you could ask. Yeah, exactly. Uh, and so the thing, like this has opened up an entire new world to us, right? Uh, because now we can have um, formulas that have terms in them as sub-expressions. And that is like, that's a magical world. Right? So we are going to augment our rules to work in this new rule, world. So we're going to change our rule for natural numbers. And now this is exactly the same as before, except now when we have p over here, where we had p of c before, we can have c with some subcomponent of C that has the number 0. And, if C, and here we have C with that, that same C, but with a subcomponent filled with an S of M. 
And so if C is some sort of predicate over natural numbers, uh, if we have a proof object that that predicate holds at zero, and from the assumption that it holds at some arbitrary m, we can conclude that it holds at some arbitrary s of m, then we're allowed to conclude uh, that, uh, that C holds for every natural number. And uh, this is the rule of induction uh, captured in the language over here. So no, this is no longer logically stupid anymore, right? It now captures our notion of, of induction. The rules are exactly the same. Uh, and now we can start like proving really interesting things. And I'll, I'll come back to that. Uh, there's just one final tidbit that we need to put in, which is the conversion rule. Uh, because now that our types have terms in it, and the terms have reduction rules associated with them, we can talk about whether two uh, terms are, con are convertible to each other. So this symmetric reflective transit filter thing, which uh, <laughs> And it says that if you have some proof object of A, and A is convertible to B, uh, then the same proof, proof object is a proof of B. Uh, and this is a decidable rule, because again, we just take A and B, we evaluate them all the way that we can, and if you end up with the same result, that means that uh, they were convertible. So here's, <coughs> here's our induction rule again. The same thing works for all the other things we added in, right? So we have an elimination for a Boolean that says that if C holds for true and C holds for false, then C holds for anything, because there's only true and false in booleans. And again, if we have C of splat, then C holds for everything. So we've added actually an elimination rule for our splat operator. Uh, and again, uh, if C holds for the left uh, case of our, of our disjunction, and it holds for the right case of our disjunction, then it holds for everything. Here. So we sort of get induction for everything. If, when you say if C holds for splat, does that mean like C holds for all the types? Uh, no, splat was our proof object of true. Oh, perfect. right. So now that object can appear as a sub-expression, and you can uh, replace that sub-expression with any uh, arbitrary proof of truth that you want, which might not be splat, although it will probably be equal to splat, <laughs> as it turns out. But, but a priori, we wouldn't necessarily know that. Uh, and that votes for a bunch of things, too. Okay.